My name is Karen Hans and I am the Salmon Trout Enhancement Program Biologist in the Corvallis District Office. So I have a lid on this tank because it helps to keep the water clean and it also minimizes the light that's on the fish. Now the light is not toxic to the eggs or the fish but they don't really like it and abrupt changes be it light or sound can startle the fish and so you want to minimize those kinds of things going on in your classroom. After they're all set up, even when you have a chiller, they still need daily maintenance. Sometimes the eggs will die and they will turn chalky white when that happens. You need to have those eggs removed every day. One thing that will happen is that egg will die and fungus will start to grow on the egg. Once all the eggs have hatched, you see the, the sack fry down at the bottom of the tank, you will see these eggshells floating around in the tank. You need to take a aquarium net and fish those out as best as possible. One dead fry will create a situation where as the fish breaks down, the proteins will form ammonium and ammonium can be very toxic to the fish. So it's really important to remove those fry because once again, you can go from one dead fry to 20 dead fry in just a matter of a few days. And that will foul your tank, the whole tank will go toxic and you'll lose all of your fish. A really good method for removing dead eggs and dead fry are these turkey basters. And you can get them at the dollar store. And you simply have the, your student come down into the tank and it's really easy to then pinpoint that dead egg or dead fry and bring it up into the turkey baster and then uh, remove it from the tank. One thing to watch for is that the, a foam will, will begin to develop on the surface of the tank like soap suds and that's a sign that ammonium is forming in the tank. You'll, you'll come up to the tank and it will smell like ammonium. That's a sign that things are going very bad and what you need to do right then is change out half the water. So you would simply remove half of the water from the tank and replace it with an equal amount of chilled, dechlorinated water. And wait for a day. If you're still seeing that foam on the tap of the tank, if you're still smelling that ammonium, change it out again. And you do that until the problem is solved. Another problem can be a cloudiness in the water. That's another sign that things are going bad in the tank. Same solution, change out half the water. So the chiller units do need some maintenance. Uh, there is a filter on the front end and it pulls off here from the bottom. And then there's a filter in here and it collects lint just like your dryer. And you need to just take that outside and knock it off, knock the uh, lint out of it. You can see how the, it'll get dirty inside and that can affect the, um, how the chiller motor runs. So it is important to keep that filter clean. It's also very important that water is always going through this unit. If you turn the pump off for any reason, turn off the chiller. You have to make sure that there's water coming through that chiller or it will freeze up the unit inside. The other big recommendation I have is don't take for granted that the temperature reading on the front of the chiller is, is the same as in the tank. These do break, they, they can show an incorrect temperature, and it's always good to have a regular thermometer in the tank to double check to make sure that the water in the tank is the same as showing on the front of the chiller.